All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And today I want to talk to you guys about the recent uh, TKO Sam controversy involving um, him putting a GoPro on a sushi conveyor belt um, out in Japan. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of context as far as like who I am, if you guys are searching up the, uh, the controversy and stuff online, uh, my name's Andy. I'm the main video editor for TKO Sam. Uh, put together mainly his TKO Rants series of videos. Um, he used to do his TKO Plays Let's Play series back when he was still doing that. Um, I've also worked on a couple of other videos for him as well, just little projects and vlogs and stuff that he has me do and stuff. So um, that's my main connection to Sam, just to give you some context. So just to give you guys an idea of what the video was about, um, it was basically just a raw clip that Sam did um, of him putting a GoPro onto a sushi conveyor belt, Kaiten Sushi, Sushi Go Round, um, has many names, and just basically getting like kind of a bird's eye view perspective into um, Japanese life, I guess just candid Japanese life, of just different people in the booths and just, you know, what their lives are in just a small little snapshot. And then eventually the camera comes back into the kitchen where it's picked up by the staff, some of the staff just kind of look at it like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and you get like a little quick little view of the kitchen and stuff like that. And then eventually um, the camera is returned uh, back to Sam. I guess from an editing perspective, um, if I were to have like done the video, because I, I had nothing to do with uh, filming or anything of that video, uh, just to let you guys know. Um, I just watched it just like you guys did. But I guess from an editing perspective, if I were to have uh, worked on it. I would have cut out a lot of the beginning parts, um, especially like the GoPro handling noise. I probably would have just gotten rid of the audio track entirely because you can barely hear anything in there except for the really loud handling noise. So I would have just cut that out, um, kept in the best bits, um, and then put on like some cool background music, which is basically what I did for my own uh, little edit on my channel. Um, it's called the VHS edit and I just did it basically to practice uh, putting a VHS filter that video actually got some attention From some people who were still mad because uh, Sam took down the original video So they found my sort of like mirror I guess and started sending me a whole bunch of mean comments and stuff like that because I guess like they can't tell the difference between one fat white foreigner from another, so <laughs> I'm just saying. But in any event, um, just want to thank you guys for uh, all the support with, within uh, Sam's video as well as my own little humble edit of it. Uh, I guess we can uh, just talk about the controversy involved, where I stand on it, and stuff like that. So um, just to give you guys a little bit of a brief rundown of what happened, um, Sam posted the video. Um, just the raw cut in its entirety sort of thing on his channel. It started really getting a lot of attention on Reddit mostly and then it started just kind of building up through other media sources and stuff and initially the uh, The reactions were very positive. You see a lot of people especially from Western countries, you know, like here in the States and Canada and other places um, that, You know, just basically saying, you know, how cool, you know, and how just Kind of wholesome it is. It, it seemed kind of like a, a fun little like movie project, I guess. <laughs> Just kind of a look into the ordinary lives of people, and uh, it was a nice little piece of uh, candid video. It just seemed like an overall positive thing, and I'm like, great, this is awesome. And then it starts getting into YouTube trending in America, and I was like, man, Sam, this is awesome. You know, you're getting a lot of good buzz and you know finally made a you know a, a viral video and then uh, the Japanese people started noticing what was going on and then the backlash happened so you got a lot of um, mostly Japanese nationalists um, people wanting to push their you know white to pig go home agenda and then you also got some like Overly sensitive, you know, butthurt gaijin being like, oh my god, I can't believe that foreigner would invade their privacy, and oh, it's so unhygienic, it's so disgusting, how could you put his little smoking turd of a GoPro camera onto the, the pure wa that is, uh, you know, sushi go round. <laughs> Freaking kaiten sushi, for god's sakes. I guess we can talk about the, uh, 
the two main points that were brought up a lot. Um, there's a couple others, you know, it's just kind of, you know, picking low hanging fruit, like, oh my god, I didn't realize Naruto got so out of shape, and just other stupid shit like that. We're gonna avoid that. I'm just gonna go over the, the two main points, which is hygiene and invasion of privacy. So, the hygiene thing, I honestly don't get at all, because um, I don't remember if Sam put it, put the GoPro on the belt itself, or if he just put it on a random plate of sushi, or not really, like, with sushi, but just, like, a sushi plate. <laughs> I'm not sure what he put it on, but either way, like, the belt is not touching the food. You'd have really nothing to worry about there, because the belt's just touching the plate, and the plate has the food. And even if he put it on a plate, you know, if you guys got to the part where they were in the kitchen, there's like a whole sink of dishes and stuff, so... I'm pretty sure those plates, once they're used, go into the sink to get washed anyways. It's not like, you know, old Tanaka-san sitting there making sushi and just, you know, puts a random roll on a plate and is like, okay, it's good. You know, obviously they're gonna put it on a nice clean plate, right? You know, and even if that's not the case, which is a little disturbing because, you know, some of that sushi has probably been there for a hot minute. I remember going to sushi go-rounds myself. I mean, I was... You know, when I was living out in Japan, there was a couple close to my house, actually. And, you know, I would usually just order it. I mean, sometimes you get some pretty good ones, just kind of off the conveyor belt. But other times, they would look a little, uh, no pun intended, but a little fishy. <laughs> um, but, you know, they would look a little dry and like they've kind of been around the belt a couple times, if you know what I'm saying. So this whole hygiene issue, I just completely don't get, you know, they're treating, you know, his GoPro camera like it's a fucking flaming turd, like he just took a big steamy shit on a sushi plate and just like put it there and was like, there you go, Japan. That's uh, one of the main issues. Uh, the other one, which is something I understand a bit more, is the, uh, the whole privacy issue. Now, uh, with Japan privacy laws, um, it's a very big gray area. Um, they are adopting some policies from countries like the U.S. as far as general privacy laws, but nothing's really set in stone. It's just general understanding and stuff like that. There's nothing really concrete written down saying, if you do this, then this will happen. A lot of it's just general common sense. You know, don't go recording a specific person. You know, don't go shoving your camera in someone's face if they don't want to be filmed. Where Sam's video lies, I think, is... Uh, in a bit of a gray area, of course, you know, hence the controversy. Um, because with his video, he basically just put his camera on the conveyor belt and was doing just a very slow pan to everybody in the restaurant, you know? I think if he were to just like pick up his camera and just like did one of these little numbers, then it wouldn't have generated as much controversy, you know? But because it was a slow pan, because you got to see everybody's face and the store wasn't informed that there was video being recorded and the customers weren't informed. You know, that's the big invasion of privacy. But for me, it's uh, generally, generally expected um, when you're out in public, whether it's in Japan or elsewhere, you know, you have to be aware that you're going to be watched, whether it's by cameras or by people. So you just have to be mindful of stuff like that and like even in Japan you know there's surveillance cameras everywhere there's surveillance cameras on the streets on light posts there's cameras in stores I'm positive there's cameras in sushi row because even fucking McDonald's can afford security cameras so don't tell me that you know a major sushi chain doesn't have surveillance cameras just to make sure you know nothing <laughs> nothing fishy going on in a sushi restaurant Jesus hope you guys are loving these puns probably not Probably gonna get some downvotes for that, but anyway, the whole uh, privacy issue is probably the number one complaint from Japanese people as well as expats living in Japan that don't have anything else going on in their fucking lives, to be honest. So as far as like my own stance on the situation, knowing Sam especially, um, I know that he didn't mean any harm by it. He didn't go out to record people maliciously. You know, he wasn't looking for a specific person or a group of people. He just wanted to get a nice kind of slice of life look of, you know, normal Japanese people enjoying some food. And it was just kind of a fun little novelty thing. And 
you know, I know stuff like this has been done before, you know, for fuck's sake, you know, Tom Green did it, you know, back in the 90s, and he even threw a fucking dildo on that thing, and people are like, oh, ha ha, that's funny, but now it's like, oh my god, disgusting, my Nihon Jins, oh my god. Yeah, as far as my own stance on it, you know, like I said, I'm positive Sam didn't mean any harm by it, he wasn't, you know, specifically going out to look for people, or whatever, it's just meant to be just a fun little novelty clip just something kind of fun to watch and share with family and just be like oh cool look at those people you know it's basically kind of almost along the same lines as street photography in some ways where you know you're getting crowds of people and stuff it just happens to be done at a very slow panning pace you know but despite all that um the aftermath of the whole situation blowing up especially in japanese media even japanese news outlets covered it you know, I think Japan Post might have covered it, Japan Times. And uh, due to the fallout, uh, the Sushi Row restaurant chain has effectively uh, banned any sort of photography, videography, anything like that within their stores. They've, you know, sent out the whole Goldman aside, big apology to their customers and stuff like that. One of the big things that was being thrown in Sam's face um, was that, you know, Sushiro is thinking about taking legal action against him for all the damages and stuff that was caused, sanitation of the belt and whatnot. And uh, I don't think any of that's going to go through, you know. At this point, most of the controversy and the fervor and stuff has pretty much died out. They just basically put that out there just to show that they take the situation very seriously, but I don't think any actual legal action is going to happen. They're just basically waiting for all the fervor and stuff to die out, and they'll just carry on business as usual. And, you know, for me, it may just be my own Western values and stuff, but I thought the video was nothing more than just a fun, candid look at Japanese life and nothing malicious at all. So with that said, guys, this is Andy san Sign up for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.